Hello fellow problem solvers. So today I'm going to be doing a problem from the 2021 IMO, problem number six. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of an hour, ideally two and a half to three hours, but not more than four and a half hours. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you take a preliminary look and play around a bit with the problem for the next 30 minutes. So now let's begin. So really this is what we're given. We're given n integers in A, and they are divided, and we have m subsets of these, such that the sum of the members of each of the subsets is equal to m to the i for i one through m for all of these subsets. In other words, we have a i plus c one i plus a two times c two i a n times c n i is equal to m to the power of i for i one through m. And the only condition we have is that c i j is either 0 or 1. Like this is what we have algebraically. And what we need to prove is that n is greater than or equal to m over 2. And also important to note is that this, uh, this representation is both sufficient and necessary. So what can we do here? Well, if you're trying to play around, it's going to be difficult. And here's why. You can't really play with small cases because the amount of possibilities for subsets is of the order 2 to the n. Now, if you're trying to prove that n greater or equal to m squared, you're going to be playing with 2 to the m over 2. And you need this thing, I mean, 2 to the m over 2 minus 1, or the floor of this minus 1, or actually the ceiling of this minus 1, you will need this to be a lot bigger than m to be able to have something interesting with this. And now with this in mind, it's important to know, like, the m that you can play with, I think for 7, you get this being equal. But there are a lot of, lot of subsets. Like, even if you think about, say, n choose n over 2, it's like a realistic sort of scenario where half of these are approximately chosen at each step. The way you can choose half of the numbers is also of the order of magnitude of n to n over 2. And looking for m, that's order m over 2 to the power of m over 4. Again, you need a pretty large m to be able to think about arguments that are not specific to small m. So now with this problem, the only thing that really you can do is like play around with these sums. So you have sum of, say, for a i times c j i for i equals 1 through n is equal to m to the power of j. And we have these m sums for j1 through m. And this is what we have. And we need somehow to be able to get a bound on this n. And that's going to be difficult because it seems like what is the relationship between n and these mj's? Now, one thing that we can do, like looking at this generally, is maybe looking at the sum of all these. So when we sum them up, we have a i, i is from 1 to n times the sum of c j i for j is 1 through m is equal to the sum of like m plus m squared plus m to the m which is m to the m like we get the m out this is m to the m plus minus 1 over m minus 1 and now this is maybe so this is definitely greater this here is at most m so this is greater than or equal to m times the sum of these uh, AIs, and now we have the sum of AIs is going to be less than or equal to, actually strictly less than in all likelihood, because not all CIs are equal to 1. Or can we actually even make this claim? Because some of the AIs might be negative, so we can't really make this claim. But anyways, I invite you now with this to play around for 20 minutes and see if you get any ideas playing around with these sorts of sums. And here's an idea. So, trying to play around with parts of the problem, like trying to get maybe A1 or AN, trying to do the extremal principle and try to estimate how big or how small some of the numbers can really get, doesn't get you there that far. You get like AN, the biggest one, needs to be greater than or equal to this, 2 times 2 to the m minus 1, if the statement is false, but nothing more. And any sort of maybe looking at the prime factors of the AIs, also doesn't really show much promise just now because it's very complex and we should maybe postpone it till later on. Because if you're thinking roughly n is around m halves, 
then what do you get here? Like, like the contradiction here, if n is less than m half, doesn't really, doesn't seem like very, like it's gonna happen right away. Like we have m over four, like of these ai's maybe in each of these sums, and we can't really find anything about adding different prime factors, prime factorizations of the ai's to get mj. It doesn't seem like that's the right step just now. So now if we look at these m sums for j's, one through m, what you really have, you have these linear relationships that some of the ai's have with m. And maybe we can play around with some of these relationships, maybe add two times one or m times one times or minus another one, and maybe we get some relationship there. So in the most general sense of the word, it's like multiplying dj by both sides for some j, for some dj, for every single one of these j's. And then maybe when we sum them up, we get some sort of identity that's interesting. So maybe let's check that out now. So once you sum it all up through all j, because if you don't... So now doing this, what you would get is summing all of this up. So we would have the sum of ai to n for i equals one. And then we have, so c of i j times dj for j is one through m is equal to the sum dj times m to the j from j equals one till m. And now, is there anything interesting about this sort of equation? And the only way I can sort of motivate this now is to see that this is interesting that if you, like, what can this be? Like, what numbers can you get from the right-hand side? Well, if dj is anywhere from 0 till m minus 1, if you're allowed it to be 0 through m minus 1, you can get any number that's divisible by m, and that's less than, what is it? It's m minus 1 times m times, what do we have? We have 1 plus m plus m squared plus m to the m minus 1, m to the m minus 1 over m minus 1. So you can get any number divisible by m from 0 to m to m all the way till m to the m minus 1 times m. So you can have m to the m different numbers on this side of the equation. And the reason you can do this is because this is a base m representation. Like if you haven't seen this before, this is a very tough problem to crack just given the fact it's a sixth problem. But the idea is qu quickly, just like you have, like every number has a unique binary representation and a unique even base 10 representation if you think about it. Every number has a unique base m representation where each of the digits, dj, are from zero to m minus one. Now, this isn't a full base m representation because we are missing numbers which are not divisible by m. Like those are the only numbers we're missing because it starts from m. It's as if your base two representation had a zero as its last digit. Then you would notice all the even numbers, you would miss all the odds, but you could get any even number. And now with this, I invite you to take like five to 20 minutes and try to see if there's anything interesting on this side. Can we get all these numbers that we can get on the right hand side? Now the first tempting idea is to try to make some of these zero. And it may be possible, maybe not, but you don't know how these are, whether these are linearly dependent would be the correct terminology, but whether it's possible to make like n, n minus one of them zero or not. I'm not sure if it's possible just now. But the idea here is just to look at the size, like how are we going to get this n? Well, the cij times dj, this sum, like dj is at most n minus one, at least zero. So this sum here is going to be like for every one of this, call it si. Si is going to be between what? It's going to be greater than or equal to zero, but it's going to be strictly less than, actually less than or equal to m minus one times m. Because the best case, the highest case is where all the cij's are one and all the dj's are m minus one. And then you get m times m minus one. So each of the si's is between zero and m minus one times m. So that means for each i, ai, I mean, you have how many choices for si? You have m minus one, 
times m plus one choices for what your each si will be for every single ai. And now with that, what is the total number of different values that you can make with this? Well, the answer is each ai can be accompanied by m times m minus one plus one values. So n of the ais can have at most this to the power of n different values. And now with this, take another five to 10 minutes and see what would you do next? How would you push the problem further? And surprisingly for number six, this problem is quickly done after this, because now with this, like this is the most, at most how many different values this can take. Whereas we have that it needs to take at least M to the power of M because this side for DJ going from zero to M minus one takes M to the M different values. So we need to have this hold true. And now you can see where we will get this thing that n needs to be greater than or equal to m over two. Because from here, we can just like do some estimates. We just have m minus one times m plus one to the power of n greater than or equal to m to the m. And now this thing right here is strictly less than m squared to the power of n, which is equal to m to the two n. So m to the 2n is strictly greater than m to the m. And from here, this implies that 2n is strictly greater than m. And this here implies that n is greater than m over 2, which is what we needed to prove. And with that, we are done. And now I invite you to take 5 to 10 minutes and try to write up a solution. That's what we'll do now. So the first thing we do is we set up our problem. We say what A is and what the condition becomes. And for CIJ is either zero or one. This is what our condition becomes. And now this implies that for every single DJ, we will have this thing right here. And now with this, we move on to our second step, which is we state this base M representation that we have on the right hand side and that it covers M to the power of M different integers. So now we move on to the third claim, which is, so now we say that the left hand side must do so as well. And we have that SI equaling this for CIJ's elements of zero and one and DJ zero through M minus one it gives us at most M minus one times M plus one different values because it's at least zero and at most M minus one times M. And with this, that means that the sum AI times SI from one through N gives us at most M minus one times m plus one to the power of n different values. So now that goes to our fourth and final point, which is we show this, that m to the m must be less than or equal to the at most different number of different values, which is m less than m squared to the power of n, which is equal to m to the two n. And now we get from here that that implies that two n is strictly greater than m, which implies that n is greater than m over two. And this is true for m is greater than one. In other case, in the case where m is one, we have n is greater than a half and it needs to be one. So this finishes the problem and that solves it all. Now, this was a difficult problem and it seems simple. And the reason it seems simple is because there's really one thing, there's one major idea, but I would still say it's a, it's a difficult problem. And the difficulty in the problem is that it's a single idea problem. You either get it or you don't. Like there's not too much you can do with this on the one hand, but also it's a, you do it or you don't. And to be frank, for all the six IMO problems that I've covered from this year, this was the hardest one to sort of make. And the reason why is because it's very hard to sort of justify this in, intuit or sort of reason with like to get to this place without mentioning anything about linear algebra or Siegel's lemma or anything that's not well known. The only sort of lesson I can draw from this is that the IMO can get weird and that when you can't do anything with simply with small numbers, like try to do extremes or anything, you need to look at the big picture and try to manipulate it somehow. So this finishes our problem presentation and as always, Thanks for problem solving.